Oh, oh shit. Hey, this is Wunkalo, or more often known as Joey, and I've been getting a lot of questions about some of the pixel stuff I make, especially with this series of GIFs that I've been making. And I've actually been making, meaning to make a full in-depth tutorial about some of the stuff that I make, like the video editing, the low-poly 3D stuff, and uh, pixel stuff and all that. But I've been putting it off for quite some time, so I'll make this quick video just to hold you guys out until I do decide to make those videos. Um, this probably won't have a lot of details, and I'll probably just skip over a lot of things that you guys want me to elaborate on. And I'm really just going to talk about the recent one that I make, this one right here. And just like talk about how I made it, some of the other stuff that I went through. But um, if there's something you want me to mention or elaborate on, then feel free to just shoot me an ask on Tumblr, and I can explain it better on there than, you know, if I was to just make this messy video. So um, let's get started. Um, for this specific GIF or whatever, I, or pretty much all of them, I start off in Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I'm pretty much just making these sprites for me to use. Because um, I'm actually animating the whole thing here. I'm just animating individual sprites, and then at the end of, uh, once I have everything set up, I have this little timeline here that has the basic animation set up that I want to accomplish in After Effects. Because um, once I have everything done here, then I'll take it over to After Effects and actually, you know, do the timings and animations and all that there. So this is all just making source graphics for After Effects later. So um, I'm actually animating like little specific things, like this star twinkle right here. I only have one of them going on, and I keep it in this folder right here because the way After Effects handles it is that if I once I send over this PSD into After Effects, it's gonna put this into its own composition. In fact, I can show it right here. Yeah, right here. And then I can actually time it and animate it, like right here, this little twinkle. And then once I have this set up, then I can just go back into my main composition. I have all these twinkle GIFs right here. And I can just place them, time them out, and then they'll just you know animate on their own. And that's pretty much most of the stuff that I'm doing here. So this is just making source graphics, and then this is actually putting it together and composing it. And what else, what else? For text, actually. Text is a different story. If the text is only one line, like you've seen in some of my other stuff, then I just have like, I have it actually rasterized. I don't have a text element. It doesn't really transfer well once you bring it into After Effects. But specifically for this though, this was um, multi-line, like says, you know, why don't you make something good happen for a change? And I actually had a lot of trouble trying to get this to animate like multi-line, like show this, scroll up, show this, scroll up, show this. So I actually didn't use this layer I actually just, um, I have, it, where is it, this is it, yeah, I actually had to just make a text element in here, which tends to not work well, especially when for pixelated stuff, because, like, I'd have to go in and then make sure the spacing here, so there's only one pixel between each of them, each of them because otherwise it'll look really, like, if this is the default look, it'll just space them out all weird like that, but it worked well for this, especially for multi-line, when I can just have it type out, move up, type some more, move up. But this one, it just, or yeah, the dis, uh, this one also, actually. This is a text layer because the ellipses, because I wanted them to like move a little more rather than just pop three dots out of nowhere. So it actually lowers, lowers, lowers. And then it shows this one, which is just a linear wipe. So it's like a transition. Like, it's like a PowerPoint transition. It just shows this, you know, reveals it. And let's see. The way Photoshop works with After Effects, like, is if you import it, like, see how all these have the Photoshop logo and it has the layer names and all that. It works in such a way that I can actually, um, I can make an edit here and it'll transfer over here like, once I save it. Like, I'll give him eyes here or something. Like, uh, let's see, this which one is showing right now? The one when he smiles. I can go here. Let me get the actual color. Because I'm, I'm actually using color curves. Like, this is my palette, and then I actually have this thing over it to give it this these um to shift the colors into this mood so i can give them you know eyes weird eyes and then save it and then if i go back into after effects it'll show up let me undo that and that's pretty much the work for for this i mean all i'm doing is um making the sprites here going into after well i make a bunch here, and then I go into After Effects, and then if I need to do edits, I go here. Um, it doesn't work well, though, if you're making a new layer. Like, I had to, for this part, 
when he turns around, I added this layer right here when he's lowering his arm, because I didn't like the abrupt change from this to this. So I actually had to make a new layer, and, and to get that layer in, I actually had to import it individually and then put it in. It doesn't save here and then import it. You know, oh, there's a new layer, and puts it here. So that's one of the little things that you have to do, though. And this is the ring back here. Oops. Yeah, this layer right here. This one. This gradation, like since we're only dealing with about four colors, I'm going to be using, I use a lot of dithering. And there's a quick way to actually get this. I think I have a small collection of it actually. And at the end of this, I'll show you how I make this real quick. Because it's actually very, very simple. If you have Photoshop, you can make this, you can make a black and white mask and then paint bucket and turn it into anything like I did here. And uh, same thing for like fade transitions and stuff like you've seen in some of my other stuff. And um, I was actually I was really gonna have you know some light beams on him, but or him. Um, let's see. This was actually an afterthought. This was originally gonna be really bright, like this, but it was too much of a flash. I was actually streaming on Skype with my friend, and it was really like this went in really quick. It was a little too abrupt, really bright. But since this is just plain, you know, dark and this was a gradation, I ended up going with this route. Because there's a lot of real estate I can put here, so like, this color is already, you know, pe pecking at this background, so I can just have this to push it back even further. And then there's him talking, and I only had like three things. There's, you know, regular, and then like slightly, you know, pondering, and then opening his mouth, and then smiling. And that's all that's in own fo its own folder as well. So that uh, later when I bring it into After Effects, I can just use a timer mapping and then cycle through the frames for whenever I need him to talk. Like, he ponders, and then smiles, and then, you know, you first. And this is actually just, let me see, yeah, this is just a bunch of keyframes right here. So it's just picking the frame, like, you first. And that's pretty much what all the sprite stuff here is. So I'm not making a bunch of GIFs in it and importing it. It's just picking, I'm just picking the frames. Like right here is frame two. I can just pick a frame. I want this frame to show up. So I can just go here for two. And if I was actually go here, you'll see it's just those frames here. And while, while I'm at it, I need, um, with pixeling and After Effects, there's actually a lot of um, little things that you're going to have to do. Like, you'll notice all the layers here, they have this kind of stair step here. This actually makes sure that it doesn't filter it, because, um, like, let me see here. I'm trying to pick the one that he's on. Like this right here. If I was to move him around, you know, it's pixelated, it's perfect, it works fine. It's like a sprite, like Photoshop when you're moving it around. But, by default, when you import it into After Effects, it's actually going to filter it like this. It's going to have that smooth line. And if I was to move it around, it will see it blur at the edges. I just got a text. And um, if I was to keep it that way, then it wouldn't be pixely at all. If I try to do an animation to make it move from one point to another, it's going to do that and like blur at the edges. So that's why I have it like this. I have them all at the, the stair step setting. And it makes sure it has a filter. Same thing goes for text, because if you do like, I'll make a text layer real quick. It's going to filter it. It's going to look blurry by default. Unless you click this and make sure it's stair-stepped. It looks, looks like garbage now, but that's why I had to fix the spacing like that. And when you export it, like right here, I make sure that's at the render settings to current settings. So however it looks in here is exactly the video that it's going to put out. If I put it to best settings, then it's just going to set everything to the highest quality and uh, filter it again. So we have to make sure this is set to current settings when you export it. Now, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Oh yeah, the wave warp on the, the background. It's one of these. Yeah, this, like, the um, when it waves warp, uh, does the wave warping and all that, it actually pulls pixels from the left and right side of it. And to compensate for that, I had to use this reptile right here. Like, or I'll move it to the side. Like, if I just had just the wave warp, then it's going to do that. It's going to, you know, wiggle at both sides. But if I just kept it like that, then 
it's going to have these blank spots at the sides. And that's why, instead, I use Repit Tile. There's also another one called Motion Tile, but this one has a little more control. And it just expands it a little bit. That way, when this filter goes on, it has more of an effect. It has more uh, pixels to pull at. So it kind of compensates it. It makes, pretty much makes it tile left and right, depending on how much I put here. I mean, this, again, is a simple linear transition. Like, where is it? Hey, universe? Yeah, right here. It's a linear white. See, hey, universe. Just keyframe, transition completion. That's it. Hey, universe. And another one thing I want to mention is um, these twinkles in the background, they loop. Like you see them, they loop once, twice. They keep going and going and going. The way I do that actually is um, what timer wrapping, I use an expression. Like right here. The actual animation, you know, if I just, if, if I didn't have timer mapping, it would just play once. So I'll just step through this entire thing. Like I'll set it to its default. So if you just made that one sprite and then dragged it in, you'll just get at this. It'll be like that. You'll just play it once and then it'll go away forever. So what I do to make stuff a loop is I go to time, enable timer mapping. So now it, uh, you can stretch this layer indefinitely. You can have it play forever. You can have it play in slow motion and it'll be really, really, really stuff like that. But what I want to do is I want to have it loop. And the way you have it loop is um, the timer mapping layer, you can give it an expression called loop out and then cycle in zero. And what this basically does is whatever keyframes are over here, it's going to make it repeat over and over and over again. And I'll see if I can show that. Like This is what how it is right now. You know, It goes from start to finish, and then that's it. And so what I basically have it do is loop out cycle, makes it repeat this over and over and over again indefinitely, forever. Like, uh, let's see, so I'll have you evaluate the expression and show on the graph, and you'll see it right here. And, and now it's looping, and it'll play forever. And the only thing that actually changes this is the start point. Like, if I make it go here, then it'll just start from here, and then start playing forever and ever. And that's pretty much how I get anything to loop. I mean, you can put any keyframe here. And it'll just loop. Um, it'll like get the outer bounds of it, and then loop it. Like if I go in the middle right here, and then make it go to a random frame like that, then I'll look at the graph, and you'll see it. Like it'll still loop it. And then I can get the last frame even, and stretch this out, and it'll just loop it. It's very useful. So you can just like make this layer, make this layer once, and then press Control D. You know, put one here. Press Control D, put one here, and then you have a bunch happening at the same time. Except I didn't want it all to happen at the same time, so I made them make sure they all have little individual shifts. So you have a bunch of twinkles. Now let's see, let's see. I did that for this right here, actually, the little prompt that you know, press A to continue. This is a simple one though, it just moves up and down one pixel. Yeah, see, I use that anchor point, so I can give it one position and then uh, it'll loop it forever. Oh, this one actually isn't looping because it only shows up for a little bit. And let's see, I think that might be it. I don't know what else to explain. Twinkle, universe, talk. Let's see. They explain Photoshop. You know, all the folders, the shooting star. I think that's pretty much it. I think one of the things... Oh, yeah, I'll just explain real quick. So, um... Let me pull this up real quick on the other screen. So, the stippling that you see in the background, the, um, the dithered gradation... It's very, very easy to make that in Photoshop because um, the GIF export option actually has an option to dither something or turn it, uh, like basically you can get a very smooth gradient and then turn it into, so it's only two colors and then it'll automatically use patterns and such to dither it. 
and you can do that just once or twice and it'll make like a like these these kind of images see how there's all these levels here and i keep getting messages on my phone so I, I can make this image once and then i can use it i can just like paint bucket these differently or um make smaller variations of it like this one that only has three different stuff or actually one it looks like three that's that's the point you just see it just tricked me right now see this is only two colors and actually i actually use this yeah this is the image i used for this actually in the background i just dragged it in uh paint bucket and then there it is and yeah there's another one and you can actually uh, i think i made a gif actually yeah this one right here this is a still fade this only uses two colors and it goes from one to the other and you can make this in Photoshop as well. It's really easy. And I'll just show that real quick. Make a quick uh, 32 by 32. Make it. I'll make it white so you can see it. Or I'll just do the gradient one first. So black to white gradient. There's the colors. That's actually a little noisy. All right. I'll make this bigger. So you can see, I'll make it 28. There, so you have your gradient, and then you want to turn this into pixels. So you can do file, save for web, and see, yeah, it's already doing it for my other options. So I can set this to black and white. And then this can be set to pattern, and if you want it to be like a smooth pattern transition, you can set it to diffusion, which is probably, or there is. So that's 100, so it's kind of noisy, or just noise, and it'll straight up noise it up. For this, I'll use pattern, and then you can just save this out and use it for later. Let's see. Yeah, this, and this is just black and white. Like, it looks like there's a gray there, but that's, that's the effect of dithering. See, only two colors right here. And then, so I have a lot of these at different sizes, and I just save it for later and then I'll do one with a uh, fade transition like uh, I'll make this a black background or hold on make a black layer make this there so I have you know from white to black and then I can tween it so I'll make it take place in 16 frames so you see it fade here. So white, black, white, black, white, black, and then say for web, black and white, and then you'll have. Oops, jeez, let me get some frame delay. Yeah, black and white, and then it'll just do the stipple fade effect from white to black using only two colors, and then I can put this in the After Effects recolor it, use it as a mask, and it'll get the good fade effect in. And that's that's pretty much all I have to say for now, at least related to that one. This one right here. And yeah, this was actually the original palette that I used for all of those. And then I have this color curves right here to push it towards these things. I don't know why I just use these colors by default. I kind of like to use these colors because it has that Game Boy effect. And then I use this, or I can give it like a different color palette if I ever decide to use one. Like I'll go to red, and then I can change this so it's a little bit different. Like that. But for now, I'm just going to stick to those four colors until I decide to pick another one. But this is the default that I use for all of those. And it's only four, so there's like, there's this bright one. There's a, where's the text box? Yeah, there's this, there's the bright one. There is this green, and then there's the absolute like darkest color that I can get. So it's just four colors. And then let me import this real quick. Like I'll import the finished product of this. And or it's showing this. I just wanted to show. Um, I scale it up to 400 percent, and then I make sure it's the nearest neighbor. If it's by cubic sharp or anything else, it's gonna blur it like that. And it's going to blur and dither it. So I want to make sure it's nearest neighbor. Nearest neighbor is um, pretty much, it just expands the pixels. It doesn't filter it. It doesn't blend them in. It just goes, um, samples it, and then expands it. And that's it. 
uh, in here, I make sure I, I keep the compositions at 30 frames per second. I think that's actually the default, 30 frames a second. And I keep it at 9264 because keeping it um, to keep all the pixel sizes the same. You know, a lot of people have been doing things when like you'd have smaller pixels in the back and then bigger pixels in the front. It keeps things inconsistent and it doesn't really look like genuinely pixel art. A lot of indie games do that. But keeping everything 9264 at 30 frames a second, like this. And I think that might be it. You know, hey, universe. Why don't you make something good happen for a change? And that might be it. I mean, this is a pretty messy video, but thanks for watching.